Hi everybody, how are we doing? Hi Sunia. I see Maggie Smith and Joanne. And let's see, I'm recording this now as well, okay? So we'll get it from the start. Who else have we got on? Go to gallery view for a second, see who's on. Anna Carey, it's normal. Hi Anna, how you doing? Roger Graham, Roger, how are you? Good to see you. And uh, yeah, lots of people still joining in. So, uh, okay, let's see if we have any doctors on. So, Dr. Nahid, I'll go for first. And Dr. Nahid is not on. And Dr. Chutelli. Yes. Hi, Dr. Chutelli. How are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, very good. Very nice picture. Very nice picture. Yeah, thank you. Hello. Yeah. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Very I good. Didn't start my video. It says uh, because the host has stopped it. What? What's wrong? Oh, I know what it is. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. 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 I know what it is. Okay. You should be able to start your video now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you are. There. Yeah. How you doing? Sorry. My mistake. My mistake. It was just a little security. Zoom are always changing the security settings. So there's just a little security. Good evening. Mate Todd says, hola from Spain. Hola, Jesme. Como esta? Spanish is a language I'm learning and have been learning for a while now, but uh, I'm actually going to Mexico next week, so I'll get a chance to practice. Let's see, is Dr. Brennan on? He is yeah, on. He's there. He's there. Yeah. Hey, Don. Hi, Noel. Hi, Chitrani. Hello, Hello, everybody. Good to see you. So let's see, is Rajvinder on? Oh, Rajvinder's there, yeah. Hi, Raj. Hello. Hey, Raj. Hello, hello everyone. Lovely evening, everyone. Yeah, it's going a little cold now, but it's still nice. It's yeah, meant it was to, good. It's meant to get yeah. really cold. Uh, One lady was saying she's very happy because she was roasting yesterday. <laughs> okay. we, know what do, we know what dosha she is. She's that, <laughs> yeah. That's a question. First question for everybody. What dosha was that lady? So she was pitta. But actually, it's meant to get very cold uh, tonight. Mm. So... Um, so put on your bed socks. Yeah, there's a <laughs> cold equals He's fresh. Thinking. Yeah, that's true. And I cold them equals fresh. Okay. So Pam Hardy says, Hi, I'm are you definitely doing? I presume it's I am definitely doing the detox again this year. I'm not sure if that's a question, Pam. I, um, we are our detox, our, our spring detox is starting on the 18th of April. Maybe you're booked into it already. There's quite a lot of people booked in and the the bookings for that close tomorrow, actually. Um, we're closing it a little early this year because we don't want to be under pressure to get the packs out to people like we were last year, you know? So if you want to do our spring detox, uh, it's on our website, you can book it there, but you, uh, you have to watch that video, but I, I presume most people have seen that video at this stage. Well, let's see. Uh, snowing in Edinburgh. Oh, they are. Okay, from dear to you. All right, Deirdre. Oh, poor Deirdre. <laughs> oh, you can keep it in Edinburgh. <laughs> yeah. no, there's nothing like a bit of snow. Not in, not in April. Get the skis out. It's not quite April yet, Don. Don't jump ahead of yourself. We're nearly there. You'll be up the mountains before it's April. Oh, no, it will be April when you're up the mountains. I think uh, Friday is the first of April. They say near cast a cloud till May is out. All right. Near cast a what? A cloud. The a Scottish cloud. one. Why would you be clouting anyway? Or cast the, you don't take off any clothes until they well, cast the cloud. I thought it was uh, I thought it was a reference to Will Smith or something like that there. But uh, um, say that again, Doctor Brennan. Say that again. You don't near cast near cast a clout till okay. May is out. You don't take off any clothes until at least May is out because you're never okay. sure uh, that it's not going to turn cold again as <laughs> no. how, sure how could you how could you go swimming you couldn't go swimming in your clothes oh, Dr. Brennan. we'll be starting back so you uh, couldn't go swimming if you were wise at all <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this is from Rose St. Clair. We'll start with the first question. How can we help reduce dry eye syndrome? Uh, you, you take that one, Don, seeing this. If you want that, or anybody can take it. Well, dry eye is, 
Dry eye is, is, is really very common, you know, after the 50s. And of course, it's a vata problem, dryness. So I think you really want to think about vata in general, and particularly the foods that reduce vata. And um, the oil massage, so that you're actually absorbing oils into your body to keep your, your, your tissues moist. Um, uh, certainly, uh, flaxseed oil, and ghee in your diet would be something very useful. Um, and uh, I mean, you do, there are the artillic drops that people use for, for comfort and better to use them. They're just basically uh, artificial tears, they're water. Um, but uh, I'd also consider the nasal drops because that's about the health of the sight and the smell taste and the hearing. So that would be good for the eyes as well. And uh, uh, maybe uh, one of our Vijas would also have uh, something else to offer. Hey, the Trifla grit will be very good. If you add, uh, we always talk about the quality of Trifla. So either you put little Trifla in the water, give it a little wash, you strain all the granules so that it's just plain water, or you can mix um, a bit of Trifla make sure it's a very very refined powder you can actually buy a commercially trifle grit but i don't know in ireland so then just put the plain ghee just take a little little ghee and massage on the eye you can also do coconut oil chamomile tea bags are very soothing so the little heat fermentation is very good as well because that helps to stimulate the, the tear gland and all the lubrication in the eyes uh, yeah make, so these are the general and in the diet, as Dr. Benning said, the healthy fats, uh, licorice is something but that's very soothing because uh, it could be a lot of heat in the liver or large intestine. So the cooling herbs like licorice tea or uh, peppermint tea uh, on the regular basis could be very beneficial. Okay. Amla berry is one of the herbs and that's also very good for eyes. MA1 is amla berry and the nasal oil that Dr. Brennan, Brennan talked about is MA730. I think everybody should be using that to be honest, you know. So we'll give one for Dr. Chitelli because she was on first. So my lower legs swell a lot most days. I do regular exercise and eat fresh, healthy foods and drink plenty of fluids. My MD did tests and said all I have to do is elevate the legs. Because this, this does almost nothing to reduce the swelling. I'm guessing that the blood flow to my internal organs and brain is also reduced. What can I do to address this issue, please? So I don't know, Dr. Chitelli, if you have any comments on that. Yeah, so regular exercise, if you are doing like gym, I'm clear and audible, right? And very yeah, faint. You, but you're very faint. Oh, it is faint. Okay, well, try to talk loud. So if you're doing anything in the gym, and uh, if you are lifting any weight or something, so you, you should be careful while doing that. Instead, I will suggest you to like try yoga. And in yoga, we have few of the postures like Viparitra. You need to like put your legs uh, near to the wall, so it will increase more blood flow to downwards towards your abdomen, and that will help to reduce the swelling as well. And there are few other herbs like you need a consultation for this. So Punarnava and few other herbs are there, which might help you reduce the swelling. Yeah. Okay. I think you need to get a, a microphone, Dr. Chitelli. It's, it's very low, you know. If you can is, get one. Is, the, is the volume up full on your computer, Chitelli? Well, it wouldn't be the volume, Don. It, it, it's more the mic, you know. That'd be her sound coming in, you know. There's also background noise from somebody's... There's some background yeah. noise. Somewhere. I was going to say that that background noise is disturbing. Yeah. Now, I'm guessing the blood flow to my internal organs and brain is also reduced. I'm not so sure about that. Maybe you have a comment on that, Dr. Brennan? Um, no, um, not necessarily the blood flow. I mean, it's probably more likely the venous reabsorption of fluids. You know, you're, you're, you're probably getting the fluids down, <laughs> if you like, but you're not getting them back up. So it might be incompetent veins that are contributing. Would Abhyanga be a good thing to do for that? Um, I think it's a Panavata thing, so do not need to know one? the age of the patient and everything. Abhyanga, especially on the lower legs, might be good for that. Oh, definitely, yeah, the Abhyanga would be good. 
Yeah. And, and uh, Raj was talking about a Panavati. Raj. Yes, yeah, so just interesting to know what is the age of the person and uh, um, yeah, just a bit more because a go to cola could be a very good Teresa, herb in general. It's about 70. Say that again? It's about 70. She, okay, that's 70. crazy. Okay, okay. Then in that age, the blood flow do get compromised a bit, circulation. So make sure you do some uh, yoga movements like cycling with the legs, that kind of yoga exercises. And do raise your legs against the wall from time to time. Upward movement of massage, like upward with the, with the joint suit oil, something more warming oil. And uh, go to cola is a, we have that in the cut form, in the root form. You can make go to cola tea. That could be very beneficial for circulation. Other things, your B12 level, your iron level, in general, I think you said the blood tests are done, they are fine, but there's no harm to boosting a little bit of B12 again, because we all could be a bit deficient in that. Okay, very good. Good bit of information there. Anna Carey has a little message for you there, Rajvinder. You can read that yourself. And uh, uh, can breast cancer be cured with, without surgery if it is stage one? Which dosa, dosha is responsible for this cancer? That's a difficult one. Um, cancer is a very complicated condition and often involves all three doshas, but often with the breast, it can predominate in kapha, but it's a very individual thing and the depression will want to be looked at. Um, you, you always take the medical um, perspective and seriously consider the options from that point of view. You can use the Ayurveda to help you you know, strengthen and nourish yourself, but don't don't ignore. That's uh, just mute yourself there. You. Me? Yeah, your your keyboard is coming through. Sorry, Don. Go ahead. Just just to, to to be sure not to go the the Ayurvedic route when you have a cancer and not go the medical route. Make sure you go the medical route with that one and use Ayurveda as a, a way of of strengthening and supporting yourself. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the good thing about breast cancers now is that they're getting more and more successful in the management and treatment, especially, as you point out, at a very early stage. So I think it's a very hopeful one. It's a very positive um, one, as opposed to what was previously very worrisome. Okay, so someone asked, you know where I can buy organic trifle ghee in the UK? I don't. Uh, maybe you can try Amazon. It's not something we sell either, but... Uh... Um, yeah, it's very easy to make at home. Um, it's, uh, if we, the trifla powder we have actually is very refined. There's nothing in it. So if you just put a pinch into the melted ghee and then you can strain it through a muslin cloth so that there's nothing in it. So the easiest way is, is that. The trifla is estrogen herb, so it will be slightly stingy. So don't worry if it stings a bit. Okay, so Roger... I, I would, sorry. Roger Graham says he does Abhyanga most mornings with coconut oil, but does not shower after every day. And then he said, should I only do, I think you're missing a bit there, Graham, but you're probably asking, yeah, I think you need to shower after the Abhyanga because the idea is it's drawn out with toxins. I mean, that's, I mean, you can leave it on for a while, but it's always good to wash those toxins off. I, I know the idea, you leave it on and you think it's doing, you know, going to be very good for your skin, but it's, it's probably better, I would think, to wash it off. I don't know if any of the doctors have any opinion on that. No. You change the oil and see, sometimes coconut oil is very um, thick oil and it does kind of clog the, the pores. So I suggest you change it to almond oil and see, or olive oil, see if that makes a difference. Yeah, especially in the, if there's a cold snap coming to the UK as well as Ireland, there's no harm in using a different oil other than coconut oil, you know. Uh, can you suggest anything for stiff joints, please? Lots of things for stiff joints, yoga, joint suit oil, mm -hmm. MA4572, um, yeah, uh, even sesame oil with MA634 mixed in with it. But again, maybe you might need a, if, if it's getting very bad, you, you might need a consultation so it can be delved into a little bit more, you know. Uh, um, uh um, uh, you um, yeah, yeah your diet yeah questions. sorry donna <laughs> that's the number one thing yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yes just, maybe yeah. they can try the spring detox as well yeah spring detox would be a very good thing ama is the root cause of all diseases really and ama comes from 
uh, impure digestion or eating bad foods or wrong foods or not digesting your food properly or eating when you're not hungry or eating in between meals or uh, eating late at night time or having a weak digestion, any of these things. And all that happens is, is that is this undigested food called AMA, it just locates itself in weak points in the person's body. And weak points vary from person to person, but certainly uh, arthritis and things like that would be. So even sipping hot water throughout the day, United States of Amma we've a lot of noise coming from somebody there, uh, but even sipping hot water uh, throughout the day or, or, or wise water, cumin, fennel and coriander, you know, in a flask uh, will, will help to get rid of AMA from the system as well, you know. Abiyanga, when can I shower afterwards? I'd say about 10 minutes afterwards. What would be the maximum, Don, do you think? 30 minutes or, yeah. 30 minutes. Thought, half an hour. Yeah, half, half an, an hour. hour. Yeah. What would you say, Chitrali? Yeah, same, same. Half an hour. Chitrali was saying? Half an hour. Half an hour. Great. Yeah. I'm still not that clear. Uh, it's not too bad. It's a bit better. Yeah, okay. it's a bit okay. better. Which yoga pose did Sorry. Dr. Chitrali mention for swelling? Yeah, I have uh, messaged her uh, okay. privately. It is Viparit Karni. So I have messaged her. Uh, will Dr. Richvinder be doing online yoga classes again? I'm not sure. She's just disappeared there. So uh, it's something we she's can. Dead. She's okay, there. She's I got to unmute her. Hang on. You were out. Uh, I think, was that your pots and pans that fell off the wall there? <laughs> no, no, no. It was my fireplace. So things. Your like... fireplace fell off. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope you're not in any danger now. Okay. No, 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 no. Uh, yes, yeah. I'm. I'm getting a lot of requests. So. For the summer, the days are longer now, so definitely I'll, I'm gonna think about it and put one of the day. Yeah, I'll announce that because uh, it was short days in winter. It was a bit difficult to manage everything, but yeah, surely we'll do that. Thanks. So iPad, so I'm not too sure who iPad is. Should a limit, it, should a limit to quantity of churners and spices used daily be observed? I haven't been able to taste for four months now, but imagine that I can faintly taste the churners, so tend to ladle them on. No, I think there should be a limit to it. You shouldn't overdo the spices. They're they're very concentrated. They're they've, they're absolutely brilliant. They contain like they're concentrated bundles of nature's intelligence. But we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't overdo them, you know. Uh, so your taste depends thing... on how much is she ladling them. One teaspoon is fine. Yeah, yeah. it just got the ladling them sounds a bit more than a teaspoon now. It sounds like a ladle full. <laughs> you know? Is it a ladle full? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think this is a very interesting question in general for people who are interested in the cooking. So I'd be interested in both Chitrali and, and Rajvinder's take on how much spices do you use and what's the limit? So they are girls, it's up to yeah. you now. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Chitrali, you say first yeah. time. So the limit is like, uh, listen to your body, listen to your body type. Like if you are, example, if it is Pitta Prakruti, try to avoid spices like pepper and even ginger. So which might aggravate your uh, Pitta fire in your body. But other uh, limits for like uh, cumin and coriander, there is not much limit, but uh, one tablespoon should be more than enough for a day. So you should not exe exceed beyond that. The easy I say to people is just if you're new to spices, just uh, if you're using the seeds like cumin, coriander, and uh, turmeric, especially turmeric can make the food taste very bitter. And then when I tell them, people say, oh, that's why my food wasn't taste as good as I, I was expecting. So turmeric, you don't do more than quarter teaspoon. Uh, for two people that can cumin half to one teaspoon you can get away with it but a half teaspoon is enough those churnas that we have vata pita kappa churna i think that they are very mild so depends on your like dr chitali said taste you if, I, if i'm cooking i like it kind of flavor so probably easily like a one to two teaspoon but um because if i'm cooking for three or four people but if you're cooking for just one person half a teaspoon first to roast in the ghee and if you feel like mm, it's still a little bit bland then you can add a bit more so so you have to kind of taste that afterwards but half a teaspoon is enough because vata churna has a asphatida in it so that can make the food a bit bitter but the pitta churna doesn't have that and kapha doesn't have that so it really depends on the churna as well uh, so the pitta and kapha i think one teaspoon and vata is uh, like a half or two to one teaspoon if you like the hingu Yes, potato, because that's a little bit on the bitter side. 
Okay. I think that the elephant in the room with that question is that there's no taste for four months. That's a kaffa problem. <laughs> yeah, so you that's really a... want to balance your kaffa. True. Yeah? That could be so a COVID maybe... problem as well. I'm not sure if that person had COVID, you know. And so one of the things that I kaffa. you could do there is use the use the nasal oil to try get the taste back. Yeah, even know? oil pulling will help. So maybe sesame yeah. oil pulling. Oh yes. So, yeah. You want to get your taste so back. That. That's the main thing. Yeah. No, so because, you no. can go for oil pulling. She's tasting it now. <laughs> She's faintly tasting it now. So yeah. no harm to have more spices. And again, we're back to the nasal drops because they remove the toxins from the whole uh, oral area as well. That and MA seven three five. Um, two drops each nostril, one drop each nostril after each meal. And the oil pulling, uh, Dr. Chitrali has emphasized, that's very important. So the next question is from Hannah's iPad. I'm 75 year old and my mouth is always very, very dry at night and especially when I get up at night and in the morning. But we know that once we go over 60, we've got a lot of background noise there from coming from somewhere. We know when we're over 60, we go into the Vata stage of life and Vata is air and space and it's very, very drying. So I remember Dr. Renan giving advice for my father one time, and he said that, um, you know, as we get older, the body tends to dry out. So we need to oleate on the inside and the outside. So on the outside is doing uh, oil massage and oil pulling, and on the inside is using ghee in the in the cooking, you know. Uh, so I would advise those things, uh, use ghee in the cooking and oiling as well. But there may be, maybe the doctors have some other suggestions for that, very dry mouth. Two things. Um, it's very likely to be to be mouth breathing through the night, and that that will happen if there's nasal blocks. So um, one suggestion is again to use the nasal drops because if you use them regularly, it'll keep the nasal passages clear. The second thing is um, a Hitler's massage, where you get a little bit of tape and just put them on your lips like that to hold your lips closed as you sleep so that you encourage your breathing through the nose. If that's tolerable, it could be an interesting exercise to do to keep your mouth closed and stop your breathing to dry your mouth. But the third thing is, if it's a really vata problem, it'll be more an oil dryness than a, a water dryness. And in that situation, I do the oil rinse, mouth rinse before bed, as well as getting up in the morning. So you could try those three things. Okay. So Anna Carey is wondering about mi mixing milk with sweet foods like carrots or sweet potato, like in a halva or pudding. So yeah. that is perfectly fine because it is like mm. sweet, uh, sweet taste, which is going to mix with the sweet uh, milk. So they can go ahead. But only thing you should limit to that eating, try to have just once a month or so, not regularly, because it again accumulates more of ama or the toxins in your body. What is the best oil to rub on your feet at night? I would say sesame oil is a good oil to rub on your feet at night. And now we have a long question. My husband has de suddenly developed eczema on his legs. I've been applying chamomile and it seems to be improving, but could you advise regarding any changes in diet that might be beneficial or any other treatments? Strangely, I've also developed a dry patch on my lip in the last few days, but this could be due to recent sun it's gone for me now just after losing that so uh i'm just after losing that question oh yeah there it is uh could be due to the recent sun or or a facial i had even though this was with organic seaweed i have sensitive skin on my face and i for some reason i can't read them so eczema on his legs uh, and applying chamomile well it tends to be a pitta thing but anyway dr rajinder maybe you have some yeah um Chamomile is good because it's kind of soothing. It depends on what dosha is your husband and what dosha you are. If you have done the course, you probably have an idea. So please type it in if you think he's peta. Or you said you have a seaweed kind of um, um, facial. So sounds like uh, because of the salty content, it might have aggravated a bit of peta on your skin. Sometimes that can happen, even though it's just a little patch. So that should disappear. Don't worry about it. But for him, you can, if he's eating on any too much of a, a fermented food, um, like cheese, cheese is one main thing to cut down, alcohol is the other thing, chilies, uh, stuff like that. So you can use skin soother oil, uh, MA3508, that might work for it because it's just only on the legs. If it's getting worse, then please consult to one of us. 
because there might be we need more details what else is going on yeah definitely if the eczema gets worse consultation is definitely recommended yeah and Elaine? even pitta detox might help in some uh, cases because it is aggravated pitta in case of eczema yeah so, and that'll tend so, to get worse over the summer unless you control it, you know. Yeah. And then even, the time to do the pit of detox would be after summer, but no, no. Let's yeah. let 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 try to let, yeah. let speak. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and even try to like uh, cut down with if you are having uh, fish and even eggs. So sometimes that aggravate more of pitta, and it will lead to worsen that eczema. So try to avoid whatever can increase your pitta dosha. And we can suggest Pitta de Detox for him. Yeah, which will be, yeah, okay. After the summer, we do that big one. So Elena yeah, says, I'm just but, uh, recovering no, from- no, 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 I think, uh, Chitrali, do you mean uh, 1665, the Pitta Detox Yeah, tablets? Pitta Detox oh, tablets. Oh, the tablets. And things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm saying oh. about the tablets. Oh, okay. And even, uh, do we have that Avipattikar powder? Yeah, we have, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that is also one of the suggestions, like at night, uh, take one teaspoon, mix it with one teaspoon of ghee and take that so it will eliminate the toxins which are there in the body. Okay. And 1663 is the detox pitta, 1663. And avipatika charna is under, yeah, we have that in stock and with ghee. Is, so they're good recommendations. Thanks, Dr. Chitelli. I'm just recovering from COVID. What would you recommend to take to boost my immune system? Don, you're the expert on COVID. <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't say that now. I'd say that. All... <laughs> Don't <laughs> say it. nobody's expert on COVID. <laughs> I'm still avoiding it. Yeah. Um, so the the yeah the recovery from COVID. We're thinking about a kapha complaint. We're thinking about a kapha season anyway. It's spring season, so you, so do everything for kapha now. You listen to your appetite and you eat lightly, and in your diet have lots of spices and particularly the black pepper the ginger the garlic um, basil uh, turmeric would all be good so plenty of spices in the diet avoiding dairy and avoiding oily foods and um, if you're tired now take the extra rest your body needs get to bed early uh, a little rest setting up in the afternoon if you if you know if if you are tired so get the extra rest you need, eat lightly, lots of spices. There's um, herbals that are useful. There's one called Ayur Defense, which you get from Noel. And it's, uh, I'd say I take a tablet of that up to four times a day with honey on an empty stomach. And there's a, a, then a tonic to build your resistance, your immunity, your strength, and that's Chavan Prash. Um, and I would take that as well. Okay. And, you know, you just get over it, but that those things would certainly help. And this, there's a similar question just down below. So all the advice is applied to that as well. So are you defense and chab, are you defense with honey and chab and prash and spices in the food and lots of rest and just take it easy and, and, and hope the recovery comes along. There's a question about Ayurveda sun cream. And we had great fun with that question last year. And uh, I think, we ended up, I, I ended up recommending this one anyway, or going searching for one. So, uh, yeah. yeah, so this is organic and it's from Alo Pura. I think it's a company in the UK, as far as I know, maybe not. Yeah, yeah and, it is. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a very small amount of zinc oxide, which is the sun blocker. So, yeah, it's yeah, SPF 25. No yeah. yeah, so uh, shields hydrates and protects. I mean, we did we did give a recipe for one if people wanted to make it. I can't remember what the recipe was now, but most people probably won't go to, go to making it. So that's one there anyway. That's an organic. Uh, I think the commercial ones, I personally feel you should avoid them. I personally feel you should avoid a lot of the commercial ones. I think they probably end up doing more harm than good. There's so, so many chemicals in them. But anyway, that's up to everybody to decide for themselves. So that's about the friends suffering from long COVID. So we've done that. Um, we've done that. Uh, oh, there's a lot of background noise. I think that's gone now, hopefully. Uh, my aunt, who is 86 years old, has recently started to get swelling of upper cheeks, like mumps, which comes and goes and can be on either cheek. What would be causing this and what would help her? Any ideas? Uh, uh, May 6, 3, 4, 
it might be rusiaza so that is one of the disorder in which the cheek swell and it becomes like red and is it itchy as well you have not mentioned about the itchiness so okay so if that person could stick in whether uh, well we probably won't get to it but uh, it'll be down further on but uh, if it's itchy what's the difference dr shatali so that is the only thing like what uh, dr rajwinder uh, suggested you can go with that oil yeah you can go ahead dr raj i think it's just she's saying it like a mump so it sounds like a general swelling doesn't mm -hmm. so the the hot fermentation you can make a little uh, salt pack or um, uh, some dry herbs or a paste of turmeric and ginger with some uh, rapeseed oil because that's a warming or sesame oil and just put in a little piece of cotton and give it a heat and the ma634 oil just dilute it slightly with the base oil and then gently rub on it so that should help with the swelling what could be the reason that's hard to say 82 year old uh, <laughs> things happen sometimes no reason make sure the immune system is good so you can give some vitamin c that can help the to boost up the immunity so i can't really tell the reason uh, because in ayurveda the inflammations are peta so that's the immune system is at yeah, doing some struggle there so Barty asks, what is the best time to take ayurvedic supplements such as morning before or after food well it depends on what you're taking them for Depends on what the supplement is, you know. So it's a Brahmi really, ashwagandha, they say later. So Brahmi yeah. ashwagandhas are like a, a nerve tonic. Nerve tonics are better taken in the vata time, so which is two to six. And they are better to take in the day because in the night time, sometime they do stimulate the mind a bit. So if you're very vata, just daytime is better. Manjishta and uh, Giloe, Trifla, they're more like a lymph, lymphatic drainage kind of stuff, a liver kaffa so they are better in the kaffa time so six to ten in the morning so morning time is 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 always good for daytime is better because whatever cleansing detox happen while you're active is better to happen okay so you can also relate the herbs with the dosha and you take in the time of the day when the dosha is dominant yeah and if you have a herb prescribed to you by a doctor then our doctors will always tell you when to take them so you can always check with them if, if it's being prescribed because it's important when you take them as well, you know. So here's one from Mary Byrne, which sounds a little serious. Uh, most mornings for the past year, I've woken up with swollen face, my tummy very descended, but not in pain, very hard to touch, uh, urinating a lot day and night, brain fog, extreme fatigue, not getting anywhere with the doctors, sodium always low and potassium high. So high potassium is straight indicating towards your kidneys, uh, Mary. So I hope you get your GFR, the filtration test done, that your kidneys are filtering properly. And if your stomach is distended, that's like a digestive issue going on. And it's a lot of pitta vata going on. So we need more details, really. Mary, that sounds like something that won't be handled on a, on a simple Q&A thing like this. I think that's something you, you would need. But that's quite serious. So I think you need to have a, if you want to get the Ayurvedic perspective, I think a consultation would be would be in order because there's quite a lot there. I mean, brain fog, it's not nice going around with that. And, and you know, and there's lots of things that are you can Ayurvedic can do for the kidneys and for the digestion and all that. But it might entail a complete program for you, a complete lifestyle program for you, really, you know. Uh, I'm also recovering from a, a week with the virus, which is wiping my energy. Any recommendations for me managing this fatigue? Well, we've done that already, uh, Siobhan. I, can I add into that? MA3323 paste is very good with the energy. So MA3323? Yeah, that okay. that's, uh, has a lot of herbs in it, especially to boost up the liver. So through liver, you can work on energy because virus, your liver would have struggled a lot. Okay, so uh, Judith says, my appetite is poor at the moment, can go a long time without eating. What can, I'm not too sure, what can... She said, what can I take to top up, possibly kickstart it? Possibly kickstart daily, daily, okay. daily okay. So, um, so okay. definitely to take digestives. They're, they're there to stimulate the appetite and the digestion. And uh, the use of ginger is very, very useful here. So lots of ginger um in your food and there is the uh, herbal digest tablets that you can take from Noel. the use of the spices like the churnas um are, are all helpful um 
and uh, um, CCFT that you mentioned. Yeah, that CCFT. Yeah. What CCFT. CCFT. What's you the, mean coriander oh, yeah. fennel? Uh, yeah. I was wondering what the T was, uh, as in I thought it was the letter T, but it's the T, it's a T T. Yeah, human coriander and fennel would be good to sip throughout the day. To, yeah, then so you, that's just, just you need to get your equal proportion and then you mix them in equal proportion, the, the CCF, the human coriander fennel seeds. And then you can just put a teaspoonful or two into your flask every morning, fill it full of boiling water. You have it there. Drink that through the day is what the digesters are suggesting. Okay, so Anna Carey is asking, can anybody use a neti pot? Uh, any precautions? I'm intrigued yet again. I don't know any. Yeah, I think most people can use them. If you, I mean, people might find it difficult to use, like you're putting not water up one nostril coming down the other nostril. But is, is there any contraindications for neti pots? Not daily. Don't use it daily because it's dry your mucous membrane too much. Uh, or maybe twice a week is enough. That's the only precaution that I'll say. And then you lubricate your oil and nostrils in between. It's a very good practice to clear the mind in general and sinuses and all that. But uh, people tend to overdo it. That's the only precaution. And when, we, when I was on my salt into it, usually. They yeah. Yeah, they put salt, yeah, they put salt. salt yeah. into it. Yeah. When I was on my course in India, we all had to go down and uh, use the neti pot, which wasn't so bad. But then the next thing we had to take a tread uh, or a piece of cloth and put it up <laughs> one nostril and tread. take it down the other nostril. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I went running for the hills that day, I can tell you. But uh, yeah, that's a different uh, that's a different thing. The neti pot wasn't so bad, I could handle that all right. But it's uh, it's a, a nice experience actually when you do that and bring the water down the other side. It's yeah. it works very well. You just have to tilt your head. Um, but putting a piece of cloth up and taking it down the other nostril, that's a different thing altogether. Uh, can you repeat oils or herbs for bad uh, uh, osteoarthritis? Well, no. there's the herbal joint sood. Joint, joint sood, sood, yeah, joint sood oil. And, and even we have uh, dashamul uh, oil as well, right? I just saw that. Dashamul oil is there, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. that is also helpful. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I know the age of the patient, so. Yeah. It's not, it's not a patient, it's an iPhone. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. It's Deirdre <laughs> Malani. It's Deirdre Malani. It's, uh, there is oh, a, is it? yeah, 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 yeah iPhone is the next person. We have a nice question coming up here now. Lots of contention in this one here. Uh, I like to make kitchery and dals with bone broth instead of water. Would this be considered bad food combining? <laughs> I think you're going to get a lot of different answers here <laughs> from the from the pure vegetarians and the, the not so pure vegetarians. Um, I think bone broth, I wouldn't really have an issue with it personally. I think probably... Yeah, uh, I'm not sure about making kitchery with it, though. Dr. Richvinder, you're the food expert. What do you think? Oh, it's fine if you are, because uh, for, for, for depends on you. If your digestion is good and you're a strong person, you can digest the broth. And uh, in normally, it's fine. The better is you make the kitchery and drink the bone broth separately. You yeah, that's what I was thinking. Out. Yeah, yeah. So bone yeah. broth is a lovely soup in itself, you know. So yeah. just, just keep the two things separate. It is, it is, it is very interesting because, I mean, bone broth has has a lot of benefits and in terms of um, in terms of the lining of the gut, in terms of the nourishment for the immune system, even the nervous system. Um, so it, it bone, it's going to be hard to digest. And that's the point. So therefore, on its own, it's going to be far better because you're complicating and making it harder to digest yet again. And of course, if you don't digest it, you don't get the great benefit out of it. So, you know, I think that's good, solid advice to take it separate. Yeah, I see you can buy bone broth soup now in the supermarkets as well. I'm not sure how good it is, but uh, I just saw it there recently, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, since COVID, I haven't been able to taste and have been using churners in cooking food and putting on afterwards two at every meal. I really enjoy Hindu powder and tend to use a lot Many thanks for the yeah okay so we've gone through that. Uh, how can someone boost their metabolism, please? Man, exercise. Man. Exercise. Yeah. Okay. Also, all the digestives. Yeah, that we're include talking all about. the digestives. Daily intake of tripla, one tripla at a time, and we have trikatu powder, which is a ginger, uh, long pepper, black pepper with honey. 
so and regular exercise I'm just going to have to go for a second here, so maybe you can just take the questions yourself and I'll be back in a second, okay? Okay. okay. What oil is good for nausea? Well, I suppose the, the nasal oil, we've been talking about MA635 is ideal. Um, and otherwise, sesame oil, it can be a good oil just to put up the nose if you haven't got the nasal oil. And similarly for the navel. Um, the ghee is very good for navel. Yeah, ghee. Oh, lovely, yes. And that's also very good for the dry eye people to put the ghee into the belly button. Hmm. Interesting. How come? It's just because of the in the Ayurveda in the ancient Vedic, the solar plexus belly button is considered a big carrier for for carrying the effect of the whatever oil you're putting uh, onto your belly button. Even they put castor oil if the person has arthritis. And some people say dramatic relief by doing this. It could be a psychosomatic relief. I, I'm not sure, but that's what most of wise recommend. So oh, it could be energy, something to do with energy, solar plexus and the, and the chakra. Yeah, no, that is very interesting, isn't it? Because when you think back, like we were all nourished through our umbilicus, you yeah, know, that's another, and so yeah. there's very, very subtle channels mm -hmm. radiating from there around the physiology. So that's, yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. There you are. We're yes, all learning yeah, tonight. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so the next um, so question. Renusha Natichi, and she's referring back to the 86 year old with the um, mom's leg swelling, uh -huh. swelling in okay. her cheeks. Uh -huh. um, so, so it's interesting, isn't it? Because it's like a kapha problem if it's swelling. It is kind of kapha problem, kapha and pitta both, because they are saying it is swelling and even reddish. Did they mention that? It's like mumps, like swelling. Yeah, on mumps, like cheek. swelling. Yeah. Would you get mumps here? So this is up here. Um, I mean, what about sipping hot water often to see if that helps? Warm water. Your fluids just through the day. Just try sipping hot water. Um, in a in a flask, put the boil the water for ten minutes. Put in a flask, and just sip it through the day frequently, just to see if it clears toxins and and helps to bring down anyway the swelling. Um, I wonder. I wonder. Can't think of anything else. Did we get the one on nail fungus? No, uh, no, we didn't. No, we didn't get down to one. When is the best time to take lassi before or after food with the meal with food you take with the food with the food yeah what are the treatment for nail fungus please oh yes isn't that a nice one yeah so neem neem is one of the herb which can be used externally for uh, nail fungus and there are a few other herbs as well like manjishta and neem so they can be mixed together along with trifala uh, and even uh, initially, you can give a trifala decoction wash to the nails first and then apply neem and manjishta together along with a little bit of turmeric, like a pinch of turmeric into that with rose water. So that can help. Any other thing uh, would you like to add in, Dr. Raj or Dr. Brennan? Um, healthier nail formula. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but the healthy hair and nails formula, and remember, it's it can only affect the nail as it grows out, mm. which means you won't see any change until you see the nail growing out. And over yes. two, three months, you see the nail from the nail bed, it's clearing. Mm. So you have to keep it going then until the nail has cleared. Mm. So a lot of patients around the fungus nail, they take a long, long time to clear. And if you have a sweet tooth, you need to control that. Oh, yes. Okay, so when my husband lies down <coughs> to sleep, he suffers from aching joints, which disturb his sleep, anything you can suggest. So we kind of covered that. That's AMA again in the joints, and we recommended the oils and the, and just uh, looking at his digestion. And, his... and no, I think stop eating his big meal in the evening. Get his big meal in the middle of the day. 
um, because you know you take a, a big meal at night, going to bed, and then you're well, that's a time when your body should be healing and cleaning, not digesting a massive meal. So I think that the first thing you should do is eat lightly in the evening and see if that helps. And then all the things that Noel's suggesting to clear armor. Yeah, because even the, eating heavy in the evening will create armor, you know. So I'm taking two fifty plus daily. Is it okay to reduce to one daily? Um, Possibly. You're taking it for a while now, yes, you can reduce it to one. Even you can give it a little break. <coughs> Sorry, I just have to go get a glass of water. Tamara is missing the heat, for so are we. Yeah, she said she can make it. She just, I think, got confused with the day. So oh, you're missing dear. her too. <laughs> oh, dear. She's okay. No, she's doing very well tomorrow. Thanks. Isn't Chandrika on the ball? She's been using castor oil for her navel. <laughs> there you go. She says, is it and okay? Then, Sounds good. Absolutely. Uh, specifically, you'd use that for arthritis or for clearing ama, Raj? Yes, yes, for arthritis, clearing ama, constipation, bloating, a lot of things. Oh, my gosh, we can all do it a bit. Yes. <laughs> the nasal oil <laughs> creates blood in my one, nose. Your loved one is going to get a shock tonight. <laughs> Just putting a cast on. <laughs> so there's a direct it's a very common practice in India. They put that on the little babies. Is that yeah. so? Yeah. For for constipation or for what? because when the when the baby is born, the connection with the umbilical cord because it take a few days for the cord to fall off. So they put a little oil, and then after that as well, they put with oil for the healing and I think for the nourishment purpose as well. Yeah. So there's some there's somebody that says they go to bed at ten, but they never wake up until nine. And they want to get up at six. So that's what? Nine, ten, eleven hours sleep. Wow. wow. That's cool. What are you doing in the day? Bad. Depends on why are you so exhausted. Yeah, it's a calf problem, really, isn't it? And uh, probably everything to do with your digestion and exercise and but that's really uh, there's very few people would need that much sleep really you know uh, and well, the sleep at, is not deep sleep is not deep maybe. yeah getting up at 6 a.m is a great thing to do if you can but i'd say it's probably a cafe issue we probably need to know more there to see what's going on there you know um castor oil for the navel i think we covered that uh, okay there's one there If the nasal oil creates blood in the nose, that one. The nasal oil creates blood in my nose. Oh. It's too strong for you. You dilute you don't it. use it then. Shouldn't yeah. do that. You shouldn't do that. And sometimes people do say it's a bit strong for them. So you dilute it with, with yeah. more sesame or coconut oil and they drop it. Just use nasal. sesame oil. I, I mean, I know people say it's strong, but I never heard of it creating blood, you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. um, don't know where we're at with the questions. Yeah, uh, calf, uh, Maria, is it all right to take I know. Of... We are at Tamara. Belly button oiling is an ancient practice. Depends on the ailment. A different oil will be applied. Babies try with ghee applied to their belly button. Yes, Tamara, thank you. And then Anne, 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 Anne Vincent, is it all right to take triflin and probiotics on the same day? Absolutely. No reason yes. why not. But only take them is... separately. Though. Yeah, take it separately. Keep a gap of one hour or so. Okay, so Maria says I she's tough. I think the best the best strategy is rather than probiotics, just eat thirty different vegetables every week. There was a woman on the radio saying that today. Yeah, because the scientific evidence now is that if you have can we buy thirty different vegetables <laughs> in well, a week? When you, when you count up, <laughs> you count up them all: vegetables, fruits, grains, pulses, oh, fruits, uh, oh, oh, everything, seeds, uh, okay. uh, herbs. What? Mm -hmm. Thirty. You should get the thirty easy, okay. and you should yeah, have with fruits, it yeah, maybe. because <laughs> each each her, each each plant has a different fiber. Each mm. fiber feeds a vast colony of really good bacteria. So 30 vast colonies being regularly fed. You <laughs> will laugh at this, Dr. Ren. I said to one patient, buy the fennel bulb and pak choy. And his wife was standing. We say, she said, can we not buy the normal vegetables from the supermarket? And I said, this is a normal vegetable in the supermarket. <laughs> so 30 vegetables, imagine what. 
<laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Probably well, people survive on carrots and, and cabbage. Carrots and cabbage and broccoli. <laughs> yeah, yeah. broccoli there's yeah. a lot of people don't get much further than that. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, this woman on the radio today was saying use all the frozen vegetables to get the variety, oh, which is goodness. not where we'd be going with well, it. Well, at least you get the fiber. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway, yeah, 30, I'd have to check up and see now how many I have. And I mean, I know when I go to McNally's, they do have a good selection of stuff, all right, and depending on the time of the year, but uh, yeah, yeah. to check and see whether 30. So Maria says she's kaffa and always had problems in spring, which is kaffa time. Pain below the knees, making hike, hiking difficult. What can you recommend? Also, neck, upper back muscle pain, depending on the weather and tiredness. Thank you very much. So, Maria, it's probably AMA. It's what we've been talking about, kaffa problems. So, all the things that the doctors have mentioned, sipping the hot water and um, you're getting the digestion very strong. And um, obviously, at the end of the spring season, uh, the, the kaffa detox as well is, is a good thing to do, you know, which is the one we're doing in spring. Don, you look like you're about to say something. I think I also I, I, that what strikes me there is a regular daily oil massage just to nourish your muscles and and uh, make you more <laughs> resilient to the tiredness. Yeah, yeah. Daily oil massage. Very good for. Yeah. yeah. When Noel comes back in from his mountain walk, you know, he gets into a hot bath with a hot cup of tea. And if he'd only do the oil massage before, he'd have a perfect. <laughs> I don't have the energy to do the oil massage. <laughs> I get back, I can, I can barely run the bath. So uh, <laughs> anyway, Fiona says, uh, someone says something about why, why do you boil the water for 10 minutes? It just makes it lighter. It makes it much more easy, easy to digest, you know, it just makes it lighter. Uh, some people suggest that carbohydrates and protein should not be eaten together. What is the Ayurvedic perspective on this? Ayurveda doesn't look into carbohydrates and proteins. No, it's a different thing altogether. Um, it's, yeah. it's, it's a situation where, you know, people are very analytical about their food. Sure, a lot of foods contain both the carbohydrates and the protein in the same food. I mean, yeah. a lot of the pulses. So yeah, it's like not chickpea possible. Is both. Not possible. It's a mm -hmm. matter that people's digestion are so destroyed from the bad habits they have that they start to look for all sorts of solutions like this one. The thing is, if you really take care of your digestion, you have no problem just digesting the combinations. So the next question is about a good night's sleep. I would recommend you go to our YouTube channel and Dr. Brennan has a great video there on sleep that you can watch that's free. And there's lots and lots of tips for sleep. I mean, just briefly, you can massage your feet at nighttime, but leave TVs out of the room, you know, switch off from all the electrical things by about seven o'clock you know don't be doing all that don't be doing things that are stimulating your mind and then there's blissful sleep tablets as well but dr brennan's video video is very informative any other quick tips there maybe an aroma oil nidra sweet sleep aroma oil in the room might be good as well you know and make sure the room is nice and dark curtains block out all the light, street light and everything like that and just make everything as conducive as possible to go to sleep any other suggestions that you might have on that if possible, uh, have like uh, warm milk along with turmeric or nutmeg. Golden so milk. will yeah. help to, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. I forgot about that. Golden milk, uh, warm milk, boiled milk with turmeric and nutmeg. Um, and that'll answer Joan Clements's question how, what you can do to keep from being hungry before bedtime. That, just that golden milk. Would be yeah, wonderful. Golden milk. So, does drinking, does drinking one amla with water? as juice first thing in the morning, help balance all three doshas. Is that right? Amla balance pitta dosha. So it's mainly for pitta. So then you want trifla if you want three doshas. Hmm. Okay, so we've answered Joan's question there. Tamara says, thank you. Would aloe vera juice be good, be a God thing to take? A good thing to take. To take it. Uh, depends. It's very good for, for pitta people and pitta conditions, you know. It depends on what you're taking it for. Is it a general recommendation, aloe vera, for everybody? Probably not. But... Uh, I yeah, think specifically for maybe for nourishing, the, for helping the skin, for helping the menstrual periods, for uh, helping digestion. But it's not something that I would say everybody should be taking loads yeah. of aloe vera juice. I'd say it could be useful. Uh, what, what, what would you, Charlie and Rajvinder say? 
Because you've got uh, aloe vera juice behind you there, Chitali, by the looks of things. Yeah. <laughs> so, see, aloe vera, if you, yeah, the juice, if you consume it daily, it's going to like increase more of pitta as well. So you have to be careful when you consume any of the juices. So try not to have it daily. You can have it once a week. See how you feel and then go ahead. Okay, so there's a question after chemotherapy, what to eat for good and fast hair and nail. <clears throat> Black sesame seeds are good for the hair. Um, and uh, the healthy hair and nails tablets, I really recommend. Um, I'm sure uh, the oiling of the, of the scalp with coconut oil. Um, or do we uh, do we have any hair oil no and uh, no can't get it can't get it no. so the ladies would have lots of cosmetic -y things that would be nourishing to hair no doubt because you can look at the pair of heads at them and see the lovely hair i would like to like recommend the ma4 paste if that is taken so it will take care of healing like all the seven tissues in our body basically and then oh, maybe with all slowly start with uh, the nuts soaked almonds like for each day and then walnuts and raisins so start taking that every day yeah anything else dr raj Hey, we were talking about the aloe vera, so you can rub the flesh, uh, fresh aloe vera plant onto the scalp because that's very good to stimulate the, the hair follicles because the chemotherapy is heat, a lot of heat given to your body, so you want to calm down that heat. So depends on how long is it now, first you need to know how far, uh, what time gap is there with the chemotherapy before starting any herb and anything like that. But you can do the topical treatment like cooling sandalwood paste, aloe vera gel, coconut oil, and then the lots of coriander in your in your diet. So cool down the pitta that chemotherapy has generated and the hair growth should happen slowly anyway. So last question. I don't think we've ever got to the last question before. This is amazing. Uh, I get itchy dry skin inside my ears. So just apply some ghee, just massage a little ghee, just from the outside. And uh, itchy dry skin could be sometime again back to pitta. So just see if you're doing anything in your diet that cause uh, that pitta. If you're swimming in the chlorine water, anything like that. So look into it. Okay, that seems to be it. That's the first time that's ever happened. But I noticed okay. the numbers are actually quite low tonight well there are 100 people but normally we'd have a good few more but anyway uh okay so um let's see what's happening next day our, our detox is starting on the 18th of april our spring detox and the booking for that is closing tomorrow and um yeah i think doc, dr strachali is going to be doing a, a webinar on constipation in in the beginning of may but i'm going to send out a lot more details about that later on and we're also uh, looking at designing a, another 500 hour course another course that the ayurveda center is going to do um, but we'll, we'll keep people informed of all of that as well you know uh, i actually completed my uh my 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 studies in in slovenia so i i managed to pass my exams that's one certificate i got from the marishi ayurveda college and sonia said the cheers for you and a lot of people did congratulate you yeah, and that's another one I got from the university itself. And this is a, a brilliant, brilliant course. And I, I, uh, I mean, I'd recommend that people do this course. Uh, obviously, it's it's to train up uh, people for doing consultations, but even for self knowledge, it's a it, it's a brilliant thing. And uh, it is for healthcare practitioners. There was a lot of doctors on it. The reason I managed to get on it was because I had studied Ayurveda in India, and that uh, was enough to get me on the course. I did ask the. Um, the course leader, uh, doc, uh, Dr. Uh, Gordana Markovic, she's a brilliant, brilliant Ayurvedic physician. Uh, if people did our course, our 500 hour course, would that qualify them to go on this course? And she said, yes, that would be enough for people to be able to apply to go on this particular course as well. And it's in a place called Maribor in Slovenia. So it's, uh, well, I spoke too soon, the messages university. are flying. Uh, yeah, it's a university, a postgraduate certificate from the university, you know. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> 
God, I don't know. I'm even going to answer that question. I, I'm, I'm actually not. I'm not going near vaccines anymore. I'm just fed up with vaccines. So I'm sorry. You'll just have to make your own way about the vaccines. It's too, it's too contentious. Uh, what can I use for itchy legs? Uh, again, a pit of thing. Susan, if anyone wants to give an answer there. Skin sugar oil might be helpful. Or anything with the camphor in it. MA3508, skin suitor, yeah, MA3508, yeah. One of my patients was having, and I suggested her camphor oil, and it was night time. And she said, I have the wicks at home, can I apply that? She did, and it did have some in <laughs> because Vix has camphor in it. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. The tiger bomb thing, you know. Okay, Mary says, where can I... There's a question there, Noel, about doing the uh, spring detox if they're recovering from COVID. Probably if you're still tired from COVID, um, it's better just to let yourself recover. Don't yeah. complicate the matter with a detox. Your body's already done one, as it were, is recovering from it. Don't do a, a spring detox on top of that. Okay. So Mary says, where can I buy turnip greens? Tesco's or Dunn's don't have turnip greens. I don't know, Mary. Farmer's market might have them. Farmer's market, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do McNally's have them, maybe? Yeah, we do have local farmers market may, may have them, you know. Uh, so lots of people saying congratulations. Yeah, no, it was nice. I it was two weeks in, in Maribor and it was, it was kind of a week on holidays and a week studying and doing exams, but it was it was great. Barbara Hill, you got that, Amber? Amber. She's asked, when is the 500 hour course starting? Barbara's asking as well. I think it'll be September if it starts, if we, if we get it together, it'll, it'll be September before it starts, you know. It depends on the and uh, we can get it together, but it depends on if the demand is there. For if the know. demand is there, exactly, yeah, we have to have enough people to want to do it. You know, uh, any eating any eating disorder talk on on Ayurveda, Ayurveda and eating disorders. Well, it's something that the doctors can think about. There, that's a suggestion. If any of the doctors want to do a talk on on eating disorders, uh, um, should spices be ground before making CCFT? No, no need to grind them. Because the boiling water will extract the active principles in the tea. So Rose says, I watched a very professional presentation for your exam. So thanks for that, Rose. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And when is the 500 hour course? Best way to remove earwax. They did that in Father Ted one night with Father Jack, didn't they? <laughs> they were making candles out of it or something. <laughs> yeah. In the court to a doctor or someone to clean it. <laughs> Um, to use to use um, um, uh, uh, oil olive oil drops in the ears gradually dissolves wax, and that can be helpful. Um, and there is a six three eight, but I don't think Noel can get it. As a no, I can't get it at the moment. And actually, I ordered Bilba oil because Dr. Ritvinder recommended it, but it's, it's got lost in the post. I'll tell you a story. The first time I was in India. God, it must have been about 1993. I was in the center of Delhi in the park, Conic Circle, and this guy, guy came up to me and he said, you want your ears to? And uh, I didn't know what it was. So I said, oh, yeah, sure, give it a go. So, well, what it can. so he took this metal bar, just a little metal bar, and he plugs it into the ear and he starts doing this. And he takes it out and he plugs it in the other ear. And he does this and then he got the bar and he wiped it in his sleeve and he put it back in his little pocket <laughs> and, and that was it and now it didn't kill me or anything like that and like geez, i've been able to hear really well ever since then so it worked but i'm, I'm not actually recommending it as a way. don't do that <laughs> but they do it they still do it and i see the guys have never been brave enough to go back to doing it once i realized what it was but that's basically what it was a little metal bar into your ear to, clean it out but uh, <laughs> but anyway yeah so i'd go with dr brennan's recommendation you know <laughs> might be safer uh, should spices yeah. be ground three, be three, more two. before making ccft not necessarily three three two five paste very gritty not a problem yeah you know the different batches come out slightly differently absolutely but sometimes yeah. sometimes i would say quite, mix it really well and keep in the sun for a day and sometimes it's the the honey can get crystallized. That could be. Ah, uh, yes, yes. That's why it is great. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Interesting. So, 
Oh, there's someone asked about tinnitus. We've covered that a lot. It's the kind of a vata condition. Um, so meditation would be very good for it. There is an oil you can get, bilva oil, but I can't get it at the moment. Uh, yeah, even uh, you can try like vacha lasunadi oil. So would you that, get that, doctor? <laughs> you that? might get it in UK. I don't know. I'm not sure if you get it on Amazon, but that's a brilliant oil. And you better type even... that into the. You better type yeah, that yeah, into yeah. the chat box there. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you have it there. Yeah. What to do, yeah. what to do with it? So uh, you have drop. to instill those uh, ear drops, like two drops in each uh, ear, and that soothes it, and uh, it even reduces the tinnitus. Basically, it reduces the vata dosha, which is increased and it lubricates i think the... the easiest substitute you can tell to um, put some yeah. dr brennan garlic. always talks about yeah that yeah, garlic he oil yeah infuse the garlic with infuse some um, sesame not sesame the olive oil or yeah olive oil, oil will be better so yeah, yeah. roast you the can... cloves roast the cloves in the in the olive yeah. oil until yeah. they're brown so you sort of cut up a clove, one clove of garlic, roast it, um, cut it fine, and then roast it until brown, until the garlic is brown. Then filter out the garlic and just use those drops as a, an ear oil. Yeah. Would you recommend massaging with aloe vera gel as a nabianga? I don't think so. Uh, maybe if there's a specific area of your problem with the skin, uh, skin doctor. Yeah. Not in general, though. Not in general. How to check if honey is pure or mixed with sugar syrups? Taste. Yeah, taste. it's a refined taste. taste. Yeah, and uh, you it need to be very sugar. careful. And most, the crystals, I think. Yeah, most commercial honeys are mixes of honeys and different things. And I remember reading one that said pure honey, you know, but very misleading. It contained pure honey, but it was mostly consisted of just sugar syrup, you know. So you have to be careful about that. Like we... I mean, I went to Spain to find our one and went to the supplier and looked at the way she processed it and everything. So, I mean, we have a wild forest one and a eucalyptus one. Uh, there are, it's probably better to even get a local honey, but if you can get a local supplier that doesn't heat the honey when they're processing it is the best. But, uh, and then just read the labels and just be very, try and try to be very, there's, there's out to trick you in every way they can, you know, so just read the labels very, very clearly. And then we had a Vija with us. I think it was Dr. Brennan. And uh, Dr. Brennan had this honey that he thought was very good and asked the Vija to taste it. And he tasted it. He said, very nice. But this, this man had a good, this man with incredible sensitivity to taste. Incredible. And um, I, he just had a cold. So I gave him the lemon and honey drink. And he came, he came shooting back out of the room to tell me how good the honey was. Um, but the other thing to be aware of is that beekeepers will take too much honey from the bees, which doesn't leave enough for the bees. So what did they give? They give the bees sugar. Yeah. But then in that way, the honey gets contaminated with sugar from the bees. And so, again, it's down to a fine taste to be aware of what's a good quality. Um, but Knowles is very good. Yeah. And I think the divider, what, was there some guy could tell that they put the spoon back into the honey or something like that? Was there, uh, maybe it wasn't you, uh, but. Yeah, that was, no, that was Dr. Uh, Raju. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he, 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 he just said that, that we gave him a honey to taste. But we were trying out different honeys. Mm. And this was another man. We were just using this vajja and tying him out. And uh, he said, you know, uh, the Indians, uh, they're always very, very pleasing you know they they never want to say anything negative to you so you have to watch out and so anyway we said well is that a good honey he said yes and we sort of took the contradictory uh, signals yes and said no what do you mean and he said yes and we said no is it a good honey or is it not we're going to be recommending this now is it good or is that so, well he said it is a good honey he said but it's as if somebody put a dirty spoon into it. <laughs> and you see, one of the properties of honey is that it takes the qualities of whatever it's put in contact, which is why we use it a lot with medicines, because it actually takes on the properties of the medicine and empowers them and takes them deep into the tissue. So it's a fantastic vehicle. But like that, he could actually taste that someone had put a dirty spoon. <laughs> Yeah, they'd probably just put the spoon back in or something like that into the into the thing. Yeah, yeah. So they just yeah, yeah. 
Just probably took see. a mouthful of honey and then put this one back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway. Uh, okay, I think. Uh, uh, thank you, doctors. Please, what was the first oil mentioned with meditation? Did yeah, I, I have mentioned that Vachala Shunadi oil. Okay, okay. With meditation. Was that was oil? With meditation, like for tinnitus, uh, Dr. Brennan had recommended to do meditation, but- Oh, yeah, 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 with meditation for that. For tinnitus. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think we're gonna leave it at that. I bought wild forest honey and eucalyptus honey, which I found the best ever I've had as I use honey every day, Chandrika, yeah. Yeah, no, the wild forest honey and the eucalyptus are, are very nice honeys and they're but they're the only two we sell and they're on they're on the website you know so i'm trying honey, to i think there there are traditions in india aren't there of honey because the according to the flowers on which the bees have taken the pollen that different honeys would have different medicinal effects so it's a very oh, refined really? science very refined science so honey and malt are made from thyme very unique and tastes so good sounds lovely yeah sounds Ooh. very very nice yeah but just be sure it's cold pressed because i mean the, the the texts go on about the value of honey how great it is for you but if it's heated it goes on equally about the damaging it can do you never know? heat it never above your own body temperature yeah and none of those honey bars or honey snacks or honey honey yeah. cornflakes or any of those things because that's all heated stuff it's all mm -hmm. heated and it creates a hammer in the system so um yeah just just raw cold honey you know raw cold pressed honey you know Okay, I'll send the recording out this honey for sore throats, yeah. Uh, can pollen be taken for long-term improved immunity? What is the recommended dosage for children and adults? I am bad at pitta. Can I put not in, but on the top of the hot porridge? It has little ghee in it too for spices. Can bee pollen be taken long-term to improve immunity? Yes, yes, it could be taken. But again, uh, honey and ghee should not be taken in equal quantity. So in Ayurveda, it is like it might create poison if it is taken in equal quantity. So yeah, but this wouldn't be honey. Have... This would be bee pollen. They, 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 pollen yeah. they have these filters that when the bee goes through, it knocks the pollen off, and then you can actually okay. buy the pollen itself. You know, mm -hmm. and it's meant to be very good for you. I, I think I have a jar of it somewhere actually, but I don't know too much about it. Now it is very good for hay fever people just exposed to it a tiny bit in the beginning and for children very little it uh, depends on the age of the child it's good for sore throats and immune system as well so yeah it, it's fine to take that way okay Can I put that? that's great so as i said uh tomorrow is the last day for booking our spring detox and our first webinar on that is on on the 13th of april and um We'll do a QA and a and we, we, we'll have some more webinars coming up. We had a good few people on our brain health webinar the other day, and we, I'll run another one. I'm away myself on Monday for a few weeks to Mexico to visit a friend of mine, and uh, but I can connect from there, so there's no problem doing that. But anybody doing the spring detox, we'll be talking to you on the 13th of April for our next webinar. But we'll have a QA and a in April as well, and we'll send this out tomorrow as well. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, a big thank you to the doctors for coming on. And we miss Dr. Nahid, but obviously she couldn't make it this evening. But uh, we will be in, will be. Will you be visiting Frida Kahlo's house? Saw that on the, uh, I saw that on the internet, all right. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is, but, uh, but I will, uh, yeah, maybe now that it's come up the second time, maybe I will go and visit it. Okay, everybody, good night. Namaste. Good night. Thank you very much. We'll be in touch good with everybody. Good night. I'll see you on Friday, Dr. Brennan, and I'll see you tomorrow, Dr. Richard. Okay, everybody. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.